Have you ever wondered the true test of a disciple? What makes a disciple truly a disciple? This is a question that we need to answer and we're going to get right into it. And so I want to remind you that if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Am I out to lunch? What is the real test of a disciple? We're going to look at the Gospel of John to answer this question. Take a look at this. John chapter 13 verses 34 to 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Well, isn't that clear? Jesus is saying that we need to have that same love that he demonstrated to the disciples of old. You see, the real test of discipleship is our love for one another. If our hearts have been renewed and rejuvenated, we will have love for the brethren. And this isn't just any general love. This is, this is self-sacrificing love. The love of Christ, Jesus says, as I have loved you. Well, how did Jesus love us so much? How did Jesus love the disciples so much? Well, of course, he spent time with them while well, he instructed them. But ultimately, I'm brought back to Calvary's hill. There on the cross, Jesus demonstrated his unfailing love, dying the death that we all deserve so that we could be saved, so that he could spend an entire eternity with us. The love of Jesus is self-sacrificing, self-sacrificing love. And that's the type of love that we need to share with one another. If we are truly disciples of Christ, we will have the self-sacrificing love for one another. Yes, of course, in the church, but let's go beyond the four walls. What about all those who are perishing without a knowledge of a crucified and risen Savior? What about all those people who don't know God as, as Jesus Christ? What about them? Do we care about them? What are we going to do? We're going to love them. And it's going to be a self-sacrificing love. We are going to go the extra mile to win their hearts and minds to Jesus Christ, to share with them that love of Christ and to help them understand the love of God so that they too may be saved. You see, the love of Jesus is self-sacrificing. There's also another thing it is. It's about self-denial. Jesus said that if we don't pick up the cross and follow him, we cannot be his disciples. Another component of the test of true discipleship is self-denial. Taking up the cross, it means self-denial because all through the path leading up to or the events leading up to Jesus Christ's crucifixion on that cross was Jesus living a life of self-denial, of self-sacrifice, of course. Now that self-denial is important. It's integral. So, a real test of discipleship, of course, is love for one another, and it's a self-denial, a life of self-denial, not seeking to please or uplift oneself, but to be humble and to be self-sacrificing and to put away the cares of this life, to put away the, you know, the pleasures that we want to indulge in. But it, there's a life of a call of self-sacrifice, of denying self and doing what Jesus would want us to do, what the commandments of God say we ought to do. Now, there's another aspect, another point that I want to bring up about this test. And, well, the disciple John, John the Revelator, he had a bit to share. It was just on that slide, so take a look. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Whoa! So hold on, if I don't love my brother, I am what? I am dead, and I know that I am alive because I have love for the brethren. So if I want to be alive, then I must love the brethren. If I want to be in life, I must love the brethren. If I want to abide in death, then I will cherish hatred. I will cherish envy and evil surmising against others if I want to live in death and ultimately die the second death and be ultimately destroyed forever and always. That's something I don't want, and that's something that you definitely don't want. So we need to have that love. But how is that going to come? We're all naturally selfish. We're all naturally, you know, uh, inclined to these evil inclinations that include hate and even murder in extreme circumstances. So how do we get this love? Well, the love is implanted into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. 
Romans tells us that, that the Holy Spirit implants this love in our hearts. And by this love and by cry, and by the Holy Spirit in our heart, we cry, Abba, Father, and we receive this new life. So we need the Holy Spirit. And that's my big appeal today is let us receive the Holy Spirit. You know, many of us are dry and thirsty, destitute of that refreshing Holy Spirit in our life. So if we're going to really be saved, we need the Holy Spirit, plain and simple. And in these, in these living temples, and this is my great appeal, is let us open up our hearts to Christ. Let us receive the Holy Spirit and ask, by, ask for the Holy Spirit and confess and forsake our sins so that the way can be paved for the Holy Spirit to rush into our hearts and lives. We need the Holy Spirit. And so, hey, if you realize you need the Holy Spirit, let me know by leaving a comment there in the comment section down below. Say, yes, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. Give me the Spirit today, Lord. Thank you so much for joining me on this Bible study. And never forget, if you like this video, like, subscribe, and share. And let me know what you think in the comment section down below. God bless and keep you until we study again.